I can't believe that didn't uh, record. Hopefully this one does. Welcome to this video where I'm going to be going over the 10 tools I use every day as a web developer. Now, you may have heard of some of these tools, you may have not. Essentially, what I just want to go over is the tools that get me by as a developer. And without these, to be honest, I don't know how good of a developer I would be. These have been really helpful in my workflow. I'm going to do a, a list of, um, well, 10, but I'm going to do it in order of importance. So we'll start with number 10, which is Figma slash Photoshop. Now I use Figma and Photoshop, not every day, but every other day basically to slice images, resize images, uh, get hex color values, and a bunch of other manipulation when it comes to images and slicing a website, taking the stuff that I need, whether that be from a PSD or a Figma file and making that into a HTML, CSS, and you know all the other spices that come with web development on top. So that's my number 10. I don't use it every day, but I do find Figma and Photoshop. Not so much Photoshop as much anymore. Now Figma's around, but for photo manipulation, especially when it comes to slicing, I do find Photoshop easier. Now I don't use it that much, so I hate paying for the license, which, you know, is annoying, but you know, uh, how do I say this? Um, Photoshop has been good to me over the years. Um, we have all sailed the ship. <laughs> um, yeah. Number nine for me would be Giphy Capture. And basically this is a little tool that allows you to screen record. And it's nice and simple, quick. You don't have to get any of these professional tools to screen record, such as ScreenFlow or Camtasia. It allows you to screen, reco screen record and create a GIF. Or a GIF. Buh, buh, buh. Who cares? But yeah, it allows you to do that. And what I found really useful is you can pass that GIF or GIF off to a client. But more importantly, what I found when I was working mostly with Jira, uh, the project management tool, which I absolutely hate, it allows you to just put it onto the ticket and say, look, this is the changes. Uh, you don't need any sort of uh, review app or any sort of feature branch to show what's going on as opposed to complex, intermediate to advanced changes, I guess. But for simple changes, showing a, a GIF to a product manager is more than enough, I think. And then you can get that signed off via product review. So that would be, for me, number nine, Giphy Capture. All right, so number eight for me. Now, this is a fairly nuanced tool, but if you are using JavaScript, you've probably come across JWTs before, and JWTs are JSON web tokens. They can hold a bunch of information don't put any private information in there. I just generally use them to have something like the user status. Is the user subscribed to the service? Have they paid their last invoice? True or false? You know, just stuff like that. Um, I don't store anything more than maybe just the username or the first name in there, to be honest. Anything that can identify a user, don't store in there. But yeah, JW2.io, I use it mainly for checking and debugging authentication when it comes to, has there been an issue that has been tracked by something like Sentry or Sumo Logic or, you know, one of these numerous tracking tools. And then it should dump the cookie because you store JWTs in cookies. Or you can store them in other places, just probably not local storage because there's some implications around doing that. But if it does come into my tracking tool, then I can use that token and see at least what's up with it. I can go into JWT.io start looking around and then I can hopefully fix the issue. So that's number eight, jwt.io. Number seven for me would be a Mac tool. I don't think it's on Windows, even though the majority of these tools, you can get them on Mac, Windows and Linux. This one is called SIP. Now SIP basically just allows you to click anywhere on your desktop or ex file explorer, whatever tool or program application you're using, and it gets the hex value of whatever you use the color dropper on. I find this to be very valuable because when you're working with CSS, if you're stealing colors from another web page, it helps quite a lot. <laughs> so if you're too lazy like myself to open up the dev tools and use the color picker in there to steal nice and fancy colors from other websites, SIP is very, very useful. I believe it's a paid tool. 
It's a bit expensive to be honest. I'm not sure if I'll renew next year, but it's not bad. I like it. it helps me out, saves me opening Photoshop, which is, you know, a huge deal because it takes forever. So yeah, SIP is number seven. Number six for me would be Charles slash Fiddler. Now, Charles you can use on the Mac. Fiddler, I believe, is for Windows and maybe Linux. I'm not 100% sure. But these tools are really good because they allow you to manipulate API responses. Now, you may run into some cause issues here and there, but they're very, very helpful in the fact that you can basically build your request and you can manipulate the response. You can map to local, map to remote. You can change a HTTP status code of the API that you're testing against. I generally use these for development APIs, not so much in production, but if you want to uh, go down that garden path of digging around on production, you can use Charles or Fiddler and it allows you to manipulate these API responses, which is really nice. It's kind of, even though it's not on the same layer, I don't think it's the same layer on the way it sniffs network traffic as something like Wireshark. I don't think I don't think it's got as much power as Wireshark. I think Wireshark maybe works at, would it be layer three or four, the OSI model? I think it might be layer three or four, whereas I believe Charles or Fiddler may be higher up. I'm not too sure. It's been a while since I did computer science networking class, but it's not as powerful as Wireshark. I can tell you that. Wireshark is really good at sniffing across the network. So maybe that is, I can't remember. But anyways, it's not as powerful as Wireshark. It's really good for manipulating API responses. I mainly use it for status codes or the response that comes back and just to check how my front end works with that particular response so it's really good i use charles but for windows you can get fiddler that's number seven no it's not it's number six Duh. so that's number six <laughs> sip was number seven number five this one is where it gets very interesting so for pe people like me who you know um are pretty good at git uh, I've used it for many years. I use it mainly on terminal. You can see all my terminal commands in my ZSH video. It's linked here on the channel somewhere. But yeah, I, I've pretty much at this point forgotten git commands completely because all my commands are running through ZSH. But there is occasions where I need a visual git editor. And for me, git up is the most amazing tool. I can't believe this is free. And I believe the development has stopped on it, to be honest, by the people who created this tool. But it's just so, so good. Like it is one of the best tools I've come across. The way I use this mainly is if I'm doing a pretty big change and say I've committed five, six, seven times, I may have put whip, whip something, whip something two, whip three, this is crap, I hate programming. Whip four, it works. Whip five, no it doesn't. Whip six, okay, maybe it works a bit. But eventually when it does work, I like to squash those commits and you can do that very easily within GitHub. You can even fix up the commits and it just makes it really easy. So if you squash them all down, you'll have one commit message. And generally you want to combine those into somewhat of a descriptive commit message. So if that's a semantic Git message, such as feet, chore, test, fix, style, whatever it may be, you can then squash them, change the message. GitHub allows you to do that and then you can push. Now you can do this in like GitLab and GitHub, but I like to do this prior to pushing. You know, it makes you it makes you look smart if you just got one commit that has a bunch of, uh, well, a bunch of changes that works the first time. No one sees all those uh, commits where, where you're pretty much giving up and you're done with development because stuff never works. So GitHub for me is in that top five of really, really useful tools. And it also helps you to divert between branches very, very easily. And if you mess up, it's very, very helpful. So check it out. It's a free tool. I think it's Mac only, so yeah, I think it's Mac only, I'm afraid. I think, I'm not sure. Check it out, it's a really, really good tool. The next one would be Postman. Now, everyone has probably heard of Postman, not the guy or the girl who puts post through the door, but the tool itself where you can send API requests. You can mock API responses with Postman. It's really good. Now it's got slow over the years. I have to say that it has got slow, but without it, there's not really a great alternative. So if you do know of an alternative, let me know and you know I will check it out. I believe now they've got like health checks in there for certain APIs. Now I'm not too sure about that. It's like a service dashboard, I guess, to trying to create, but I'll check that out. But Postman, it's really good for me because I have like a bunch of collections in there for when I'm testing APIs that are 
linked through something like GraphQL. And I do use GraphQL in there as well. So I'll check the GraphQL queries, mutations, and then I'll go back to the REST APIs on the back end to make sure they're all set up correctly. And it's just very helpful, very, very helpful. Number four would be, what is number four? Mm, Quarker, that's it, Quarker. If you haven't used Quarker, you are missing out because Quarker is one of the best tools, hands down, I find. It's basically real-time JavaScript in a tab, whether that be in Visual Studio Code or IntelliJ, it's amazing. I use this all the time, especially when I'm doing code reviews because if somebody's put a code review up and they've got some sort of complex reduce or map, you know, some sort of higher order function that is basically confusing as hell and you have no idea what's going on. And basically, do you be that person who just clicks accept on the code review because you're scared of what's going on in the code review? Or do you put that code into Quarker, pass it some data and see what gets returned? That's what I do because you learn stuff from code reviews. So being able to just put stuff into Quarker is very helpful. You can see um, how Quarker wor works. There's like a free and a paid version and it works across multiple operating systems, multiple editors, code editors, so good, so, so good. I've used this for years and it's definitely made me a better programmer. When something is not coming back as expected, whether that be like a response or some sort of calculation, I always mess up dates and calculations in JavaScript mainly. Those are my two that get me generally. I just put them into Quarker and in real time, it'll give you the result. So if you're doing a calculation, you'll get the result almost immediately because it gives you the result to the right hand side of your code. It's amazing. One of the best tools, I can't recommend it enough. If you're a junior developer, get it. Like I've, yeah, it will improve you as a developer like massively, it's amazing. Number two, potentially could have been number one for me, but I was back and forth between two and one. But number two is coming in for the Chrome DevTools. DevTools are just fantastic. I honestly do remember the days of having no DevTools and it was horrible. Like, I don't know how I developed back then without DevTools. You right click in view source and you thought you were some sort of hacker. You see all the tags. That was uh, that was my life. I was definitely more into like penetration testing when I was younger as opposed to standard development, but it may be something I get back into in the future. But Chrome DevTools, if you're a developer, junior, beginner, advanced, if that's even a thing, is anyone advanced at web dev? Probably not. Can you create stuff? Yeah, it's fine. We can all create stuff. There's always bugs, always bugs. But mainly I spend my time in the network tab these days seeing requests, seeing what response I get back, what status code, performance, tracking through the, the heap or the CPU. Um, you don't get too much. There's no point really checking too much like the CPU on the front end, I don't believe. But if you are performance tracking or doing analysis of performance on something like a Node.js server, remember it's single threaded. So pay attention to the CPU in that instance and see how many requests can come in. Getting a little off track, but another great thing I love about the dev tools, and it's not so much the dev tools, uh, the core of the dev tools, but it's the extensions such as like the React dev tools, the profiler, being able to see state updates, you know, when it highlights, that's really, really useful for me as a React developer as well. So I just find that um, amazing to use. And of course, just being able to get hex values off other people's websites. <laughs> What else do I use in there? Lighthouse, of course. Lighthouse is amazing. Now I think that's it, to be honest. Network tab, Lighthouse, Performance, React DevTools, and the HTML, CSS, Element Selectors. And number one would be, of course, the ever-growing jungle of hyenas, wild boars, tigers, lions, rattlesnakes, Stack Overflow has to be the number one. Now Stack Overflow used to be a great community. I find it now to be very toxic, but don't worry, it can still be toxic and you can still learn off it. You can still go on there, see answers, because probably what you're struggling with has been answered 10 years ago. It's JavaScript, unless it's some sort of higher order function or some sort of nuanced functional programming uh, question you have. Be prepared to get on the Kevlar, the steel armor for when you are walking into the gates of Stack Overflow and you dare, you dare click ask question because the hyenas will come, not in packs of six, but in packs of 12, 18, 24. They'll come, the keyboard warriors will come, and they will start talking mad crap. How do you not know this? <laughs> that's, that's what they're doing on this platform today. They're just so toxic on there. But anyways, it's been a tool I've used over the years, and without it, to be honest, I don't know where I would be. So as much as I make fun of the, the platform and how people love to show off how many points they've got, it is what it is. In the words of Tony Soprano, what are you going to do? 
take it or leave it. But that's my top 10 tools as a web developer, Figma, Photoshop, Giphy Capture, or Jiffy, JWG.io, SIP, Charles, Fiddler, GitHub, Postman, Quoker, DevTools, and Stack Overflow. Let me know what tools you use every day. I'm always looking for new tools, so please do suggest some. And yeah, I'll create more videos like this in, in, in the, the coming weeks, coming months, years, decades. I don't know. I don't know when I'll be back. We'll see. We'll see. Thanks for watching and good night. Uh, right, I hope that the sound on this one actually worked. That's three times the sound didn't work. Oh. What's time? 12 o'clock? Alright, oh, that's...